The final proof is always in the print. We're wrapping this series up with high quality prints and our honest take on what stood out the most. This is the final video in our printer comparison series between the Wallpin and the DX Onjet. Over the past few episodes, we've taken you through transportation, assembly, print prep, and software, and we've learned a ton along the way. If you've been with us from the start, thank you. It's been a fun eye-opening process comparing two of the top wall printers side by side. Now it's time to bring it home. In this video, we're gonna look at real world prints, wrap up our thoughts, and highlight what we really think matters when choosing between these two machines. If you wanna dig deeper, check out the full playlist in the description and make sure to grab your copy of the Wall Printer Buyer's Guide while you're there. Let's get into some printing. We're gonna be doing a three foot by three foot image with each of these printers, and we're gonna be running it at eight pass to see how the speed compares. Now, the reason we're using eight pass, it's just kind of our gold standard. For most print projects, it's what we use to print with, both machines can go faster at four pass where you get twice the distance printed at a time. However, that can lead to potentially needing to negate some printing artifacts and watch issues a little more closely. We usually use that when we're printing at more of a distance, but just know that either image could be a lot more saturated or a lot less depending on how you use your settings. So we're gonna go with our gold standard that we use for absolute quality on every project. Now something that might be a little different between these two prints is saturation levels, and we're actually not gonna be looking at that primarily. The reason for that is both of these softwares have different ways of tweaking how much ink goes on the wall. We'll look into quality a little bit at the end as well, but it's good to know that both these printers print in great quality that no client is gonna have any issue with. Eight pass, here we go. For this print test, we wanted to create a controlled real world comparison. So we chose a three foot by three foot ultra high resolution image that would let both printers show their best. The goal here wasn't to trip them up, but to give each machine the opportunity to perform at its highest quality settings. When it comes to evaluating wall printers, people often zero in on print quality. But here's the thing, both of these printers produce high quality images. The differences in clarity or detail don't make or break your ability to sell a mural. What actually matters to your business is speed. How fast can you deliver that quality on site, especially when time is money? So for this test, we prioritize the settings we'd actually use in the field. Could we have printed faster? Sure. But like with any printer, when you push for speed, you increase the risk of printing artifacts, things like banding or color inconsistencies that can compromise the final result. What you're watching now is both machines operating at the settings we'd feel confident using on a real job site, balancing speed and reliability for client ready results. This isn't about picking a winner. It's about showing what matters when the printer leaves the showroom and hits the wall. All right, now that we've got both of our images printed, I can share that the wall pin printed this three foot by three foot image in eight pass in 33 minutes. The DX on jet printed the same image in eight pass in an hour and 15 minutes. So a noticeable time difference there. That may or may not matter. And we'll talk about that here at the end as I do conclusions. So what I wanna go over now is the pros, the cons of both machines, and everything that we've learned throughout this process and what really sets each one apart, maybe even what each manufacturer could learn from the other. Now, what really sets the wall pin apart is gonna be the UI. Obviously, the software is really well refined. It's really easy to use and intuitive. That's not gonna be as crucial to running the business as some of these other things we'll talk about, but it is a nice touch. It also has minimal to no odor, which can be a very nice experience for clients and for the operator. Now what the wall pin really exceeds in that sets it apart and makes it great for doing jobs is gonna be its print speed and how it assembles and transports. I can build the wall pin in 15 minutes flat and that makes it really easy when you're showing up the job site to get started on a print. Our time to print with the wall pin is usually around two hours and that includes loading in all the bags, talking to the client, measuring and doing our final print prep before we actually hit print with everything assembled and ready to go. Now the second thing that really makes the wall pin stand out is its print speed. And you can see from the time difference in these two prints, it's printing over twice as fast as the DX Onjet. Now maybe we could do some optimizing there. Both of these printers can go faster. Again, A-Pass is kind of a gold standard in printing. It's just considered very forgiving. You're not really gonna see printing artifacts. Everything is gonna be pretty predictable as you print. And so it's a good metric to judge this by. And at that speed, the wall pin was two and a half times faster than the DX Onjet. All right, now for the cons of the wall pin. Obviously the pro software subscription, since the DX Onjet comes with a lot of what Wallpin considers pro features built in, it is a bit of a con that you have to pay 2,700 a year to get those pro features. It's not gonna affect the actual functionality of the printer, but it will help the printer to finish jobs faster depending on the image that you're doing. Now the other con I have for the Wallpin is the front steerable wheels. 
They're rarely used for curved walls, and so it mostly becomes a liability that you need to pay attention to them and keep them guided on the track. But again, this can be pretty simply solved with something like wheel guides, which we have on ours. The only other con I really have for the wall pin is that the track doesn't move, and this only becomes apparent when we're comparing these two machines. So if I wanted to print this wall and then let's say another wall over here, I would need to dismount the machine with casters, roll it away, move the track, and then remount it and set back up. But it overcomes that by being so easy to assemble. This whole machine really is like Legos to put together and the track is no exception to that. All right, now for the DX on jet, some things that set it apart would be automatic purging. The fact that I can put a cap on there and then click purge and let it purge itself. I don't have to get cloths, I don't have to get gloves. It makes that whole process of print prep feel a little more software driven than driven by your hands. Another place that it sets itself apart is the movable track. And while it can be a little harder to assemble, it makes it simple to roll the machine from one wall to another, even down a hallway, while keeping the entire thing ready to go, where you have to do very minor print prep of only a few minutes once you arrive at the next wall to go to the next print. There's of course the fact that the DX Onjet comes with features that Wallpin considers pro, such as automatic distance to the wall, and I don't mean distance control as the machine moves, but rather the head moving automatically to the preferred distance rather than having to manually set it via a slider or some other mechanic like moving it in with a button. The most significant feature that Wallpin considers pro is what they call skip swath. And the DX Onjet again comes with this built in. So if you're printing that curved line, it's just gonna follow it and print only where it needs to print. So we find on certain projects, this can save you up to 40% of the print time, especially if you're doing a skinny shape with long wings, it's gonna save a significant amount of time. And you do have that with the wall pin, but you do have to pay for it. Now, one thing I was really surprised by, because this machine is more affordable significantly, is that the quality is actually higher. Now, I need to make this note, it's not actually higher to a degree that any client would care or notice it. You would have to print these side by side and at least work in printing or have some kind of magnifying glass to tell the difference between the two. But it is noticeable to me that this is a little more crisp. But again, only when you're looking at a half millimeter scale, no client's gonna do that. And so that's actually not gonna make a difference on how you sell prints, how you perform them, or any client feedback on any of your projects. And the last obvious area where the DX on Jet sets itself apart is the price. The fact that it's so much more affordable than the wall pin and can still do this is significant. Now the cons for the DX on Jet, I would say the first one is that the ink smells more. It's not something that's hugely noticeable while you're printing, but especially during print prep when you're doing a spray onto a cloth or you're checking your nozzles, you can notice it and it can be a decently significant smell. While you're printing, you do smell it more than the wall pin, but it's not like it overwhelms the space. Now, probably the most significant con to the DX Onjet is it's time for assembly. It took me an hour and a half to build this machine, and this is after I've already done it once and really reviewed the process of doing that. It was about as fast as I could, unless I left it partially assembled. If you did leave it partially assembled, you're gonna need at least two people to move it. And to share a first-hand perspective on that, the wall pin base is probably the heaviest part of the machine. This is the flat block you see at the bottom with the wheels on it. It's about 40, 45 pounds. So not too bad, but you need to be fit to be able to lift it. Whereas the base of the DX on jet feels significantly heavier. It has steel axles, steel blocks in each corner of the base, and it makes it a lot harder to lift. I can do it, but lifting the entire machine assembled seems like way too much for one person, possibly even two. So you're not gonna be able to cut down on too much of that assembly time unless you have a crew that can move it onto site. With that said, it's pretty obvious what plugs in where, especially after you've done it once. It just takes time to put it together. The last thing for the DX on Jet, which again is hardly a con in the actual running of one of these businesses, the software just isn't as intuitive. But there's some pros to that too. It's actually capable of doing more than the Wallpen software because it is a standardized printing software in the industry. All right, with our pros and our cons out of the way, let's talk about our conclusions through this whole process and my personal perspective on things. I think the Wallpen is still the best on the market. It goes faster, it's easier to assemble, and those are two of the biggest things when you're running one of these businesses. However, the Chinese machines are catching up, and that's why it's so important that we make this video right now. For years, there was no debate. The wall pin was the only way to run a business, and if you got a Chinese machine, it was likely gonna be so unreliable that you'd have unhappy clients and you'd be confused on where to go next. But that's not the way that it is anymore. We're only sacrificing some time to be able to use a Chinese machine, which is a really big leap ahead for them. And we're seeing even more things coming out in the years to come that they're planning on right now. Now at Wallprint Academy, we will always advise you to sell before you buy. 
So if you're looking for a machine, you're considering buying a wall printing machine of any sort, go out and sell first. Find clients, find people that are interested, and depending on that interest, it may dictate which machine is better for you. If I found most of my interest in doing early sales was gonna be breweries, coffee shops, ice cream shops, the DX on Jet might actually be a great way to do that. Because even if it's gonna take longer, whether I'm pulling a four or eight hour day, it's probably the only thing I'm planning that day is to go do that print project. No matter which machine I have, I'm making $1,000 a day. Depending on the print you do, that's usually a good ballpark to go off of. Obviously, sometimes we're making $1,500, $3,000 a day. But if you can make $1,000 a day, you're doing good. And you can do that with either one of these machines very well. Now, it's not to say you can't do small jobs with the wall pen. You absolutely can, and I've done many. In fact, it's made the process a lot easier. But I want to make sure to cater to people who are interested in their ROI, how quick they can get their return on the investment of the machine. And if you have a lot of small jobs lined up that are going to be one-offs, then the DX on Jet does give you a lot faster of an ROI with it being a much more affordable machine. However, if you really value ease of use and being able to be a solo person going and setting up these projects, completing them, and then getting home in a reasonable time, the wall pen might be better for you if you're willing to make that extra investment and accept that your return on investment might be a bit longer. Listen guys, this whole process has been so fun for me, so I just wanna thank you for tuning into this video. As this market continues to grow, I would encourage you guys to subscribe if you're not already and stay in tune with what we're doing because we're really tapped into this market and it is changing and it is growing. And that's largely due to some progression that China's making with their machines. These are definitely not the only two machines on the market, there's many. So if you're interested in learning more about other machines, click the link below. We have a full buyer's guide with most of the machines on the market, the pros and cons of each, and what that interaction is like with their support teams. And of course, if you're really serious about buying a wall printer and starting one of these businesses, I can't recommend the Wall Print Academy course enough. And that comes personally from somebody who's trained 60 operators and seen how those businesses grow. In that process, it's very evident that business sense and understanding this specific market, which is a niche and has its own intricacies, is huge to how you're gonna sell the technology, the prints themselves, and then how your business is gonna run. If you get on the course, most of the intro section is about how to sell before you buy, and then that course will become an asset once you have a machine to teach you everything that you could imagine about wall printing. I'm doing the Photoshop course, so I look forward to going over mock-ups, as well as fine details and how to get your prints perfect once you have your machine. I'm Liam, and it's been a pleasure, guys. Look forward to seeing you next time.